In this episode of the Bannerlord Perks Guide, we will look at the tactics, skill perks. By the end of the video, you will have a complete understanding of what each one does and which to pick based on your specific needs. I put timestamps in the description for your convenience and without further ado, let's get started. Loose Formation this perk reduces the incoming damage from enemy archers to our infantry by 10% for auto-resolve battles. We can see in testing without the perk, we only inflict 62 casualties on the enemy, but 72 with the perk, which is a 16% increase. The secondary captain perk reduces morale loss by 25% from casualties taken while in line, loose, circle, or scatter formation. Tight formation. Our infantry will inflict 10% more damage to cavalry in auto-resolve battles with this perk. We can see from the testing without the perk, we inflict 55 casualties, but with the perk, 75 casualties. This represents a 36% increase. The secondary captain perk reduces morale loss from casualties by 25% when troops are in shield wall, square, skein, and column formations. Against archer-heavy kingdoms like Batania or Kazay, loose formation is great. Against cavalry-heavy kingdoms like Vlandia and Asarai, type formations will be better. The captain perk is a bit more straightforward. Loose formation is the pick because the vast majority of fighting should be done from line formation for melee troops or loose formation for ranged troops. Shield wall and square are great for avoiding casualties, so morale loss isn't as important there. Asymmetric warfare. We can pick up another 10% bonus to auto-resolve battles with this perk, which works in snow and forest terrain. In the testing, without the perk, we inflicted 16 casualties and 32 with the perk, actually winning the battle. It's difficult to say the percent increase because the outcomes were opposite, but needless to say, it's a good perk. The captain perk increases troop movement speed by 2% while in snow or forest terrain, which seems negligible unless you're stacking several of these perks together. Proper engagement. This perk only gives a 5% increase in damage during auto-resolve battles, but it's active in many more places around the map. Plains, steppes, and desert. Basically anywhere that is not a forest. In testing, we see 40 casualties inflicted without the perk and 52 with, which is a 30% increase. The captain perk increases troop movement speed by 2% when in these terrain types. If you plan on fighting in Asteri territory, then proper engagement is the pick. Otherwise, asymmetric warfare is better since there are forests all over the map and it's double the damage. For captains, either one is fine as the effect is very small. Horde leader. Now we're talking. The party leader perk gives a plus 10 to party size and at level 75. It can be taken early when it's most important. The secondary perk is army commander and decreases cohesion loss by 5%. In testing, we see a minus 14 cohesion loss per day without the perk and a 13.3 with or exactly 5%. Small unit tactics. This party leader perk allows us to take an extra troop with us into banded hideouts. Without the perk, we can take a total of 10 troops, and with the perk, that number increases to 11. The captain perk gives commanded troops a 5% movement speed bonus when commanding less than 15 troops. The pick for party leader is easy. Horde leader is the pick as plus 10 party size is an S tier perk, and it's worth considering putting a point into tactics just for this perk alone. For the captain perk, small unit tactics is the only option. Coaching. With this perk, we get a 3% damage bonus during any battle, regardless of circumstances. Without the perk, our troops inflict 89 casualties, but with the perk, we won the battle, resulting in 108 casualties inflicted. The captain perk gives a 1% damage boost for any troop the captain leads. Gone are the 2% days. Welcome to the 1%. Lawkeeper. This perk adds 10% more damage from our troops during auto-resolve battle with bandits. Without the perk, we inflict only 9 casualties on the enemy, but win the battle and inflict 32 casualties with the perk. The captain perk increases damage by our troops to all bandit units by 4%. If you plan on using auto-resolve to fight against other kingdoms, then coaching is the party leader pick. If you're using auto-resolve solely for bandit farming and leveling troops up, then lawkeeper is a great pick. For captain perks, they both are bad, but coaching is much more flexible since it works against any troop type. Improviser. This perk removes the morale penalty for being in a disorganized state while being attacked, which is difficult to test so I can't speak to its effectiveness. The secondary perk reduces the number of troops needed to sacrifice to break into or out of a siege by 25%. We can see in the test we lose 19 troops without the perk, but only 14 with the perk, which is 26% less. Swift Regroup. 
No more all loss here. Instead, it reduces the disorganized state duration. In testing, we see it takes about six hours to lose the speed penalty and only about five hours with the perk. The secondary perk reduces the number of troops sacrificed to avoid a battle by 50%. In this test, we needed 34 troops without the perk, but only 17 with, which is exactly 50%. The pick here is entirely based upon the secondary perk since the primary are both not good. Personally, I think Improviser is more useful as I rarely run from field battles, but I do break into sieges to help defend quite often. Both perks are good though and pick based on your preference. Call to Arms Both perks here are labeled Army Commander, with the first giving a 10% speed boost to parties moving to join you, and the second reducing influence needed to call parties into an army by 15%. Without the perk, it will cost 196 influence to call all these parties into an army, and this party moves at 4.3 speed. With the perk, the influence reduces to 182, and that same party's movement speed increases to 4.7. On the march. When assaulting a town or castle, the defenders get a fortification bonus which can make a significant difference to the outcome. This perk reduces that bonus by 20%. In the testing, we inflict 303 casualties to the enemy without the perk, but 422 with the perk, which is an increase of 39%. Fortification bonus is no joke. The governor perk increases the bonus on defense by 20%. The pick here depends on how your campaign is going. If you have tons of influence to spare, then on the march should be the pick. If you're struggling to gain influence and need to create armies, then Call to Arms is the pick. On the March is the only option for governors and is very powerful for defending thieves. Make them pay. This perk is tagged as Engineer and deals 25% more damage to enemy siege engines for campaign map bombardments. In the testing, we can see without the perk, our Ballista were doing 160 damage to the enemy siege engine and 200 damage with the perk, which is exactly 25%. For reference, Ballista have 500 hit points and deal 160 damage, Onager have 1500 and deal 640 damage, and Trebuchet have 3200 hit points and 1360 damage. So without the perk, Onager and Trebuchet can one-shot Ballista but nothing else. And with the perk, Trebuchet can actually one-shot Onagers. The Governor perk increases siege engine damage done by defending engines by 20%. Pick them off the walls. This one is also tagged Engineer and doubles the damage done to defending personnel by our siege engines with a 25% chance to proc. Without the perk, we kill off between 1-2 to two defenders per siege engine being knocked out. With the perk, that range jumps up to 1-4 to four per siege engine destroyed. The Governor perk gives the exact same bonus, but for the defending siege engines. I'm not totally sold on one perk over the other, but I think pick them off the wall is a bit more useful for both main and Governor picks. Whittling down the enemy troops through knocking out siege engines can add up quickly, whereas doing more damage to the siege engines probably won't change the outcome of the siege, but it's hard to say. Elite Reserves with this perk, our tier 3 or higher troops will take 20% less damage in auto-resolve battles, which is a huge number. In our testing, we took 695 casualties without the perk, but only 541 with the perk, which is a decrease of 22%. The captain perk gives a 5% damage reduction to troops under their command, which sure beats 1 and 2%. Encirclement. This perk increases the damage done while outnumbering the enemy by 5%. In the testing, we see 562 losses without the perk, but 580 with the perk. I reran the test another 10 times each, but was getting the same results. I loaded a different save file and tested it again with a bigger battle, and we see 1037 losses without and 1063 with the perk. It appears the perk is not working properly. The secondary perk reduces the influence needed to boost army cohesion by 10%. We go from needing 20 influence per 10 cohesion boost without the perk down to 17 with the perk. Not quite 10%, but I suspect there is some rounding error there. The pick here is quite obvious. Elite Reserves is just an amazing perk to have. Even if Encirclement functioned properly, I would still take Elite Reserves over it. It's also the only Captain perk. Besieged. In the recent 1.7 patch, Siege Assaults got a huge boost with ladders and towers functioning properly. This perk will help increase damage output from auto-resolved Siege Defense battles, which might be a nice alternative to fighting them in person now. We can see from the testing, without the perk we lose 140 troops, and with the perk only 126, or 10% less. The secondary perk increases influence gain from winning Sieges by 50%, but it didn't work 100% of the time. It also will only work up to 50 influence so if you win a big siege that normally would give 50 influence, this perk will do absolutely nothing. Pre-battle maneuvers. 
This perk increases the simulation bonus damage on having a higher tactic skill than the enemy army commander. In testing, we see a total loss in the first battle without the perk. We reload the battle and test once more. The enemy commander has 100 tactic skills, while our own is at 225, or a difference of 125. This time, we win a landslide victory and lose only 21 troops. We can also see the influence gain is higher since the secondary perk increases influence gain from winning field engagements. Once again, the pick is easy here. Pre-battle maneuvers offers a significant value for both perks as the auto resolve boost is massive if we have a higher tactic skill. We also will be fighting more field battles than sieges in general, making this perk more useful. Counter Offensive both perks here are Tech Party Leader, with one giving a 10% bonus to auto-resolve battles when being attacked, and the other giving 10% boost to damage when being outnumbered. In testing, we let the enemy attack us with superior numbers and took 43 casualties without the perk. With the perk, this number reduces to 42. I ran the perk test with three different battles, running each battle 10 times each, and at most of the time, casualties actually increased with the perk. It doesn't seem to be working as described currently. Gendarme. This one is a real head scratcher. Neither perk can be used effectively by our main character, and the captain perk gives a tiny 2% damage increase for cavalry against infantry only, and the governor perk gives a measly 1 security per day. These perks seem like they should be at level 25, not 250. The only perk that is supposed to work for a main seems to make auto resolve battles worse, making gendarme the pick for everything since it will cause the least amount of harm to our build. It's the only option for captain and governor picks. Tactical Mastery. This perk is deceptively good. It's tagged as Army Commander as opposed to Party Leader, which means it will affect our entire army's performance and not just the troops under our direct command. It increases the auto-resolve damage bonus by 1% for each level above 200. We ran testing of the same battle four different times. Once at level 1 with no perk, where we lost the battle. Again at 275 without the perk, where we won with 886 losses. A third time at level 275 with the final perk, giving the same results as without, and and finally at level 330 with the perk and taking 818 losses. I reran the testing for 275 with and without several times with different battles and each time it gave the same result so I'm not sure what's causing it. For a campaign using auto resolve a lot I can recommend getting the 330 tactics since it does help quite a bit at the higher levels. Here is a perfect example of 330 tactics at its finest. We're outnumbered nearly 3 to 1 and still managed to pull a victory out of it. I also tested it again without being in an army to see if it made any difference and it seems that it is not a requirement to get the perk working. We are nearing the end of the video which means it's time for the bonus. Are you too lazy to fight in person or too bad at combat but still want to play Bannerlord? Then why not try an armchair general playthrough? With this build you can conquer all of Cal Radio without personally lifting a finger. Well except to hit the auto resolve button of course. To make this work we will need to pick up several perks. We start with scouting perk 150 and 250 giving us a boost to both bandit fights and all others. The rest come from the tactic perks and will help boost our output for most battles. The most important ones are 200 elite reserves, 225 pre-battle maneuvers, and 275 tactical mastery. We will maintain an army of tier 3 or higher units, have a massive tactics advantage over all of their commanders lower than 330, and have the max bonus to all auto resolve battles. To test this build out, we will compare the kill death ratio of a run without any perks at level 330 tactics, and then again with these perks active. We will start with 500 troops and are not allowed to recruit anymore. The first first battle is against the Vlandians, which we outnumber them greatly. We only lose one troop in the process and take out 123. Next up, the Forest Wookiees. They have 133 troops of various quality, but get crushed just the same. Only two losses with 133 casualties inflicted. Enough of the child's play, let's take a castle. No siege equipment, just bum rush the walls and take it. We just barely eke out a win here, taking 70 losses and inflicting only 229. Sieges are no joke. We spend several days healing up and get back after it. This army of 700 looks like a fair fight for us. Unfortunately, we came up short and the old man Durthurt ruins our hopes and dreams once more. We take out 498 troops with us, but lose the rest of our 427. We took out a total of 983 troops and lose 500 for a total KDR of 1.97. Not great considering we can get between 5 and 10 KDR easily commanding the battles in person. Now let's take the perks and try it again. We will try to follow a similar route so we can compare. The first battle results in 
and zero losses for us and 123 casualties inflicted. The force Wookiees go down just as easily and only take one of our troops out. The siege goes much better this time and we lose only 45 troops while taking out the same 229 enemies. A couple days rest and we are ready to get after it once more. This time an army of nearly 1400 besiege our humble little castle. We lose a whopping 18 troops and defeat 1336 with our troops. Not bad at all. Time for a field battle against copper bowl numbers. We only lose 10 and take out 474. Now time for a real challenge. 750 battalions. This time we lose 27 troops but remove 757 from existence. Another 700 man army. This time the empire. 33 losses. It seems attrition is catching up with us but the results are no less stunning. We could be here a while so why don't we turn this into a montage to speed things up. This was taking longer than I expected, so I found an army that should be able to defeat us so I can edit this video. But we ended up dominating them. 31 losses and 724 casualties inflicted. We didn't have enough time to heal up our wounded, and we ended up fighting a force five times our size. We took out 65 with us and lose the rest of our troops. The grand total from this run comes to 500 total lost troops and, drum roll, 7,031 kills, or a KDR of 14 to 1. Had we been able to heal our troops for the the last battle, we could have easily doubled our casualties inflicted. I hope this test was as eye-opening for you as it was for me, as I'm now planning on doing an auto-resolve only run soon. If you want to help me out, don't forget to stab that like button before you go. If you want to see more videos and guides just like this, consider subscribing. Let me know in the comment section below what topic you want to see covered on the channel. Up next, we'll be looking at the roguery skill perks. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.